breaking news. I have new merch. I've got this new one designed by my good friend, Michael Shantz. It says, hell yeah, brother. Hell yeah, brother. And the listen to new metal shirt, as well as all my other designs. And you can check all of those out at the link in the description of this video. All right, everybody. Now it is time to talk about one of my favorite topics, band merch, specifically the most ridiculous band merch that I could find because, you know, you've all seen, you know, the black shirt with the band logo on it. You've seen the shirt with the album cover on it, maybe enamel pins or stickers, stuff like that. But, oh, that is just the tip of the iceberg. If you want to go deep, deep down the weird, strange world of band merch, you are in the right place because right now we're about to talk about some of the weirdest, most embarrassing, cringiest band merch you will ever see starting with <laughs> the classic the kiss casket which if you're not familiar it is a kiss branded coffin that came out i don't know 10 years ago or something like that so if you ever wanted to get buried in this this uh flame covered kiss casket like this is what you want to look at for eternity you got the portrait of kiss on the inside of the lid if you want to stare at this for eternity, you can do it. You've got the kiss pillow, the end of the road, 2019. You've got a kiss pillow to rest your head on as you take your journey into the afterlife. You've got the band members on each of the corners, the band members on the top of the casket. I mean, who wouldn't want to go off to heaven decked out in kiss gear? I like the uh, description quite a bit here. Own an officially licensed kiss casket with a K. Just to keep it classy, Kiss Casket with a K. This is the ultimate piece of memorabilia, memorabilia to complete any Kiss cave or collection. So there's somebody that just bought one of these to put in their Kiss cave. Display horizontally or vertically, open or closed. The interior is badass too, with black velvet and another amazing HD image on the cap panel. That badass interior. I always wanted someone to describe the interior of my coffin as badass. Caskets are wrapped in high quality car wrap material are 20 gauge steel, non-gasket and made in Tennessee, USA. I don't know what non-gasket means. This is the same design used for Vinnie Paul of Pantera. Well, there we go, I'm sold. If you ever wondered what casket Vinnie Paul was in and how you can get one of your own, now you know, and look at this guy. Looks like he's in some brutal death metal band. Gene Simmons begrudgingly taking a picture with somebody who paid $10,000 for a kiss casket. He probably charges you another 10 grand to hold the phone while you take a picture of him with it. Cause that's my man, Gene Simmons. Gene Simmons, get the money, sis. My man, Gene does not give a fuck at all about anything other than money. And that's why I love him. I'm not badass enough to be buried in a kiss casket. None of us are, but that's just the beginning of the uh the weird band merch iceberg we've got lots more where that came from for example from the weezer web store we've got the fake mustache set for ten dollars you can blend right in tell me what do you think this mustache looks like if you saw this on somebody's somebody's lip would you think that was a mustache or would you think it was something else i thought they were turds too <laughs> I thought they were turds. Um, 100% certified human. That just makes me think it's even more like poop. Human poop. And actually, thinking about it, putting someone else's facial hair on my upper lip is maybe, maybe more gross than putting a turd on my lip, you know? Like putting on somebody else's facial hair. Like imagine trimming someone else's like mustache hairs or beard hair hairs gluing them into like a fake mustache and putting that and putting that on your on your upper lip that's that's disgusting i might choose the turd over that um not not appetizing is this related to some weezer video or something like that where they were like wearing fake mustaches i don't know i don't know the uh the origin of this but i don't want it like the jackass skit where they trimmed their pubes and glued it on some guy's face yeah or or the beavis and butthead one this is what he thinks the beard is going to be. Ow! That hurt. Hold still, asswipe. <laughs> yeah. Okay. 
<laughs> if I'm over there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but you know, what you think is going to happen when you get like a cool beard, you think all these girls are going to flock to you and be like, oh, I love a guy with a beard. Please take me now. That's what you think is going to happen. But in reality, all it's going to be is other dudes with beards coming up and complimenting you on your beard. That's reality. Speaking of something else that's going to kill the mood, how about the U2 condom from the Octung Baby tour back in 1992? It says Octung Baby condoms because the name of the album was Octung Baby, but it looks like it says Octung Baby condoms because Octung means like watch out, right? Like warning. It looks like this is a condom for a baby, which would be real weird. I feel like maybe they should have used a different font or something like that because um, imagine going to the concert and being like, yeah, they they handed out condoms for babies. Um, that was weird. Why, why does YouTube make condoms for babies? Also, uh, I want one of those because as a man who is, you know, let's just say, you know, you go to the, you go to the store and they've got the extra large ones, right? They've got the magnums. Well, I'm saying I I've asked, you know, I had to, I had to ask at target. I said, Hey, I see the extra larges and the regular ones are, do you have any extra small condoms? And, uh, the lady just, she didn't even say anything. She just looked at me looked kind of disappointed and just walked away as well. Excuse me. I'm just saying, why do the normal ones have to be so baggy? Why do the normal condoms fit so baggy? Am I the only guy out there that wonders how come normal condoms are so baggy? I can't be the only one. So I, I would be grateful to have a baby condom. Uh, but I gotta say a YouTube branded condom, you know, it's a little bit weird. Imagine, you know, you bring a girl home or a guy, I don't know, bring somebody home on a date and you're about to get it on, you know, you're like, oh, you know, like in the movies, like you just start te tearing each other's clothes off as soon as you walk in the door. It's about to go down and you're like, uh, I better use protection and you pull out the U2 condom. And that's just like the record skip moment where she's like, uh, you know what? I just remembered I left the oven on. Uh, I, I, I gotta go. It was great meeting you. I feel like that's what happened with the U2 condom. So how do you know if a dude has a small pee pee? He tells you his favorite band is U2 and then he pulls out the U2 baby condom. That's how you really know he's got a small pee pee. <laughs> I'll pass. Also something kind of creepy. This is like legitimately disturbing to me. It's more than a little bit creepy. Cannibal Corpse stalker gloves. That's what they call them. <laughs> stalker gloves for $25. Uh. A little bit weird. I don't know if it's their idea of like an edgy joke, um, but for a band that has so many songs about killing women, I would say this is not a great look. You know, this is the band that has a song called She Was Asking For It. I would say, you know, if I was their manager, I'd say, hey guys, maybe don't make, you know, the rapist gloves. Maybe don't do that. Maybe don't make the serial killer gloves. Kind of weird. Maybe don't do it. <laughs> I understand their fans, you know, think all that kind of stuff is cool and blah, blah, blah. I get that, but uh, not a great look in my opinion. That's right. The band has a song about eating vagina skin. That's right. This is the band that has a song called Addicted to Vaginal Skin, I Come Blood, and she was asking for it. Maybe don't make the murderer gloves. It's not cool. And $25, what the hell? You can get like a pack of 10 of these at Costco for like $14.99. Ridiculous. We're just getting warmed up. If you thought that was the most cringy merch, oh no, 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 my friends. We're just getting warmed up. We have barely started to go down the iceberg of cringy uh, band merch. Let's talk about uh, my boys in uh, Ask Alexandria. Back in the late 2000s, the golden era of misogynist, edgy slogans. Ask Alexandria, among the best. And what I find weird, they seem to be really into this phrase, this get on your knees phrase. I'll, I'll, I'll go into detail in a minute. They seem to really like this one. I'm not sure why. This was the first one, you know, get on your knees. Of course, it's all these like giant exploded print graphics that, you know, barely fit on the shirt. Get on your knees, a little bit edgy, but it's not that bad, right? So they said, well, that shirt wasn't cringe enough. How do we take that even further? What's next? Like, hey, guys, I really like that uh, get on your knees shirt. What can we do with that? How about get on your fucking knees? How about that? Well, I would say, guys, first of all, maybe don't use this like Comic Sans type font there. Second, um, this is a Christian channel. How about get on your freaking knees? Huh? How about that? I would just like to know, like, did they call the artist and they're like, hey, mate, love the get on your knees shirt. 
Uh, could you make it say, get on your fucking knees? And he's like, oh yeah, all right. Yeah, no problem. Type it in there. Okay, there you go, guys. Oh, and can you do a really bad distressing on it so it looks like, uh, it looks like a cheap print that got halfway washed off uh, after two washes. Yeah, no problem. Done. There we have it. But no, they weren't done. There's something about this phrase. They just really love this get on your knees phrase. So they updated it yet again. For anybody who didn't know, and they're saying, get on your knees, why? To pray or like, uh, cause you, you're tired of standing or what? Why do you want people to get on their knees? Well, they included a visual representation of a girl administering fellatio. So you knew why she was getting on her knees. And you're like, oh, you wanted her to get on her knees to do that? I did walk in on my mom doing that to my dad once, but I thought only married people did that. You mean if I wear this shirt, I could get one of those cute scene girls to do that to me? Oh. Well, I would like that very much. That sounds great. I'll take 10 of those shirts. I love it. Oh, she's licking the belly button. Okay, that's what it is. And I love this model. <laughs> this guy is having the time of his life. Like, hey, uh, Ricky, come here for a minute. Do you, do you want to model some merch for the catalog? Yeah, okay, no problem. Uh, here it is. Put this on. We'll take your picture. And he was like, okay, sounds great. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Imagine being the model for a shirt and not realizing what he's wearing. No, this isn't photoshopped. He's actually wearing this. So this man consented to wearing this shirt. Now imagine this following him around when his employers search for him or maybe his, you know, if he's married now, every time his wife gets mad at him, she's like, hey, Rick, remember that time in 2009 when you posted that fucking stupid merch picture with that girl sucking your dick? Well, I remember now take out the garbage and change the baby's diaper because I didn't fucking forget Gonna follow him around forever. If you thought that they were done with their weird obsession with this get on your knees thing, you'd be wrong because their next shirt in this line, I'm confused. It says get off your knees. At first I thought it said get off your knives, um, but then I realized it's get off your knees. Well, which is it guys? Do you want me to get on my knees? Or do you want me to get off my knees? Which is it? I'm confused. Get up, get down. It's like, you know, the cat wants to go outside and so you open the sliding glass door, but then she just stands there sniffing the air and you're like, which is it? In or out? What is it? That's how I feel like with these guys. Like Ben, Ben Bruce, my man, I love you, but you got to make up your mind. Do you want me to get on my knees or off my knees? Which is it? So many ideas, I know. I'm confused. I don't even know what they want from me. That's right. This is the alternative shirt for the Mormon kids. The self-respecting ladies who want to keep it PG. I gotta say, out of all the bands that did the edgy slogans, I feel like they really probably took it further than anyone else, or maybe not further, but they had more edgy slogan shirts than anyone else. This one might be my favorite one. <laughs> it says, get the fuck away from me in like giant impact font. <laughs> like what is, get the fuck away from me. Who would wear this? This isn't even edgy. It's just like hostile. You know what I mean? <laughs> the last one for Masking Alexandria uh, in case you thought the other ones were too subtle, they said, let's take it to 10. Just says, you stupid fucking whore. <laughs> I mean, all right. Uh, I guess we know where they stand. <laughs> you know, get on your knees, get off your knees, get the fuck away from me. And then they just start yelling, you stupid fucking whore. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's my job interview shirt. Their merch designer seems like a well-adjusted person. Hey, listen, it was 2009. And again, look at this guy wearing the shirt. Imagine how much he uh, regrets wearing this shirt for the Empiricon catalog 12 years ago. Middle school appropriate. And the vast majority of people buying this shirt were like, you know, girls under the age of 16. It was a different time. Nobody thought to ask the question, um, are you sure we want to do this? Are you sure we want to put this on a shirt? Maybe we shouldn't. Maybe we should just put the logo. No, they went for it. Okay. You know, not all band merch has to be edgy. And I'll tell you someone that makes uh, some much, much nicer family friendly merch is Brett Michaels from Poison and Rock of Love. Brett Michaels has his own merch store, the Brett Michaels official store. 
here at shopbrettmichaels.com. And I'll tell you what's great about Brett Michaels merch store. Not only does he have a great selection of products, but he even has a rewards program. Brett Rewards. Just like Bath and Body Works or Target or Starbucks, earn two points for every dollar spent. Uh, earn bonus points on select items. Earn bonus points for select activities. Purchase, earn points, and spend points. So if you ever wanted to get a deal on some Brett Michaels merch, don't worry, you can use your Brett bucks. And let's take a look at some of the best items in a store. For example, a lot of fragrances. If you ever wanted to smell like Brett Michaels, or maybe smell like one of the girls on Rock of Love, you could get a bottle of Beautiful Soul Perfume. A fragrance by Brett Michaels. Imagine what this smells like. Have you guys ever been to a gentleman's club? Do you know that uh, that lotion that all the uh, dancers at the gentleman's club wear? I feel like that's what it would smell like. It's like coconut lotion or I, I don't know what it is, but they all have the same lotion. And I feel like that's what beautiful soul smells like. And I can just imagine him saying like, I think you got a beautiful soul. Uh, as he reaches for your tit, <laughs> it's $55 or you can use 550 Brett rewards to purchase it. Uh, and if you buy it, you'll get 110 Brett bucks. And you could use that to buy something like this, the Brett Michaels skull and crossbones hat that says Brett Michaels on it in bright green stencil font. Like when you discovered that you could use that font when you started exploring the font menu in Word and you're like, oh, it's got that cool like military stencil font. And you're like, you typed out, this is Tyler's room, stay out. Well, now you can have that on a hat with this cool bright green skull for only $125 or 1250 Brett bucks. Also, um, the Rose and Thorn bandana, you know, his signature bandanas. Now you can get one of your own. Brett Michaels, Roses and Thorns with this cool tribal skull on it. It's yours for $10 or 100 Brett rewards. That's right, you put on this hat with this bandana, the pussy just comes right to you. The pussy will come to you. You will be drowning in pussy before you know it. Just spray on a little bit of that cologne, put on your bandana with your Brett Michaels hat. You're gonna be fighting it off. You won't know what to do with it. And if you wanted to bring the smell of Brett Michaels into your house just a little bit more, you can do it with the Talk Nectar to Me Love Plus Candle Jar featuring a photo of a shirtless Brett Michaels says, rock the summer, talk nectar to me with Brett Michaels in his big basketball shorts, throwing up the horns in the water. I'm sure that's in Florida. Why is he shirtless on a candle? I don't know. No, those aren't Photoshopped abs. Brett Michaels looks good. He does keep in shape. Got to give him credit for that. Not sure why he is so into candles, but this is for summer. Summer's almost over. Fall is almost here. If you don't want to spend 220 Brett bucks on, a, on this candle, maybe order now. Get the Christmas cookie Brett candle featuring Brett in a Santa hat. <laughs> or maybe the mojito candle. The guy has like a whole section of his store dedicated just to candles. You know, I think at this point his fan base is like, you know, 52 year old uh, suburban moms from like, you know, Mechanicsburg, PA. And he knows what they like. They like candles. But I'd say if, if there's only one thing I could get from the Brett store. I think it would be this. It would be the Retro Skull Party Gras Bandana. I mean, look at this artwork. This looks like something from a Lil Aaron album cover. <laughs> Brett Michaels Party Gras featuring this clip art skull with a rose in its mouth and the clip art top hat. It's like, uh, who wants to party? Who's here to party? I'll be at the Applebee's in Toledo, 4 to 7 p.m. Just bring your party gras bandana if anyone wants to throw back an apple flirtini. Graphic design is definitely his passion. You can tell. Maybe he wants something a little bit edgier. Well, I've got good news for you because there's quite a few other options for more, let's just say, uh, adult products from many of your favorite bands. I don't know why so many bands are into making the creepy adult stuff, but there's a lot of them. For example... The Rammstein box set with dildos, handcuffs, and lube. It comes with six dildos. A box set. I mean, what Rammstein fan didn't want six pink dildos with some handcuffs and lube? This is the truly disturbing part. 
What's more, the six dildos are shaped to reflect the size of each band member's schlong. You know, just in case you needed to know how big Till Lindemann's wang is. Now, I don't know if they labeled them, um, but I feel like they should because we all want to know, who is this guy? Who is this man right here? Clearly the lucky man of the group. And then this fellow over here, the needle dick, this poor guy or this poor fella. Everyone wants to know who number two is. That's what we want to know. We all feel bad for the guy with the small pee pee, but I don't know. Are like horny moms. Is that who the, is that who the Rammstein fan is? I don't get it. Like who wants this? This is my question. And it's the real question is where's the representation for all the average size guys, right? I mean, I'm pretty sure like three inches is average, right? You know, I'm clocking in right around average. And I just want to know why do they all have to be so big? Why do they all have to make me feel so inadequate, you know, rolling out four or five inches? That's my question. And also do they shoot flames? So I feel like, you know, Rammstein are the kings of like fake deep. When, as far as I can tell, their videos are all just a bunch of, like, booby and dildo jokes. But it's not just that. Till Lindemann, the singer of Rammstein, not content to have his weird box set of dildos, he has a whole online sex store, including a golden shower drink and a dildo based on his microphone, as well as a $170 vibrator, uh... Who wants, like, why? Why do they have to be so creepy? I'm genuinely unsure why these people have to be so creepy. One dildo wasn't enough. You had to make a whole set. A penis necklace, socks, t-shirts, and more. Why? Why? The statement reads, Dr. Dick opens practice. The doctor is ready to see you, fellow patients. The practice has now finally opened. I mean, this guy's like 50, isn't he? 59 years old and the man is like uh you know what i just turned 59 you know what i should do i should open uh my own line of sex toys <laughs> i don't know i don't know you know who else made a signature line of sex toys well into his twilight years motorhead motorhead adds three new items to signature sex toy line i don't know if i want to meet the person Who's interested in this? By the way, this is uh, the Bomber Dildos sell for $64.95. Well, the Warpig Wand goes for $164.95. Uh, my first thought was this, this actually looked more like a, a beer tap than a, uh, I don't, I guess it's a, a wand. Who is the person that's like, oh yeah, that's what I want to put in my hoo-ha. I want to think about Lemmy while I'm pleasuring myself. And I want it to be shaped like a fucking bomb. Who wants that? I don't know, but apparently someone wanted it enough that they had to make it. Super creepy. Uh, another one. This is a thing. Band guys like making this weird sex merch. I don't know why. I guess because uh, this is the truth about musicians. No matter how old they get, they could be 59 like the guy from Rammstein. They could be 100 like Lemmy, but they're still 16 year olds uh, mentally. The body ages, but the, the mind never grows up. For example, MGK is releasing a vibrator for Valentine's Day called the Lil Devil. If you ever wanted to impress the special lady in your life, why not get her one of these? I mean, imagine your wife comes home from work on Valentine's Day and uh, she's expecting something special, right? She's expecting you to surprise her with something because that's what women do. You know, you can't ask them what they pro tip, by the way, never ask your wife or your girlfriend what she wants to do for Valentine's Day. You have to surprise her and you have to surprise her with what she was already imagining. It's a pro tip. You got to be a mind reader. If you want to keep your wife or your girlfriend happy, you have to surprise her with what she was already thinking of. That's the trick. And imagine if like every woman, she walks in the door and he said, honey, I got you just what you wanted. Look, it's the MGK vibrator. And she's like, oh, you said, oh, how did you know? How did you know? And you're like, well, I just know what woman wouldn't want an MGK vibrator for Valentine's Day. Then you'll stay happily married forever and ever. That's how you keep the spice alive. Give her the MGK vibrator. Or, you know, maybe if she's a little bit more on the gothic side, you could get this. You could get her the ghost sex toy box set, which includes a t-shirt, a book of satanic hymns, some sort of weird contract, 
a uh, dildo with the singer of Ghost's face on it and a, a butt plug. It's like, oh, honey. Oh, how did you know I wanted a ghost butt plug? Uh, I was telling Carol at work, you know, I really hope my husband does something nice this year. I really hope that he takes us to Applebee's and gets me that ghost butt plug that I've been thinking about. How did he know? Oh my gosh, my husband is the best. He is so great. She's going to take this to work the next day, brag about it to everybody. And all the husbands at work are be like, damn it. That guy made all of us look bad by getting his wife that ghost butt plug. Oh, that asshole. I should have known. I really need a fake Bible to have ghost branded sex toys in them. Oh, that's what it is. I see. The fake Bible is a case for all the ghost sex toys. Oh, a certificate of authenticity. That might be what it is. The piece of paper is a certificate of authenticity. So you don't want to get duped into buying one of those counterfeit ghost butt plugs. Make sure that you only buy a genuine ghost butt plug and you will know because it will come with this certificate of authenticity. That's right. There goes my plan. I was going to get rich bootlegging the ghost butt plugs and selling them on eBay. But uh, Papa was one step ahead of me. He thought of that. That's why you should only buy the verified official ghost butt plugs with the certificate of authenticity to thwart all those bootleggers like me. Well, I'm in the merch for something a little bit more G-rated. For example, this Justin Timberlake axe. An American felling axe. Unfortunately, it appears to be sold out. But uh, I don't know about you. But when I think about uh, what I would like to get for my birthday, I would like a Justin Timberlake axe. So next time we go out camping, you know, and I got to chop some kindling for the fire so we can make some s'mores, you know, when it's time. Don't worry, guys. I got this. I'll chop some kindling and I'll pull out my JT axe and all the other husbands that we're camping with. Be like, oh, damn, he's got that Justin Timberlake axe. That's how you know he's a real man. I think all the other husbands would be jealous. Have us looking at this merch for ideas of your own. I don't know. I feel like maybe Justin Timberlake was like, uh, maybe he was feeling a little bit emasculated or something like that. Um, you know how a lot of the hipster guys would, uh, you know, dress the part of a lumberjack with the flannels and the beard and all that kind of stuff. But, you know, in reality, they were like art director at some fucking social media agency, like the least masculine, least blue collar job you could find because they were having a little bit of an identity crisis. Maybe that was going on here. I don't know. But either way, I hope that someday he brings back the axe because I would like to have a Justin Timberlake axe. Another interesting collection kind of surprised me. The One Direction lunch bag not a lunch box a lunch bag now first of all that's when you know uh that your fans are young when you make like fluorescent pink and purple lunch boxes so they can take them to school you know when they go to their fourth grade class they can bring their capri sun and uh, bologna sandwich to school in your lunch box um but my question is this. It's been a long time since I was in elementary school. Lunch bags? That's what we're doing now? Like, when I was a kid, I had a Superman lunch box that was made out of metal. And I know that they made some cheaper plastic ones as well, but bags? Like, lunch bags? This is sick and wrong. It's disgusting. Lunch boxes, not lunch bags. Whoever invented lunch bags should be thrown in prison. Lunch boxes, I refuse to accept this. A lunch bag, I refuse to accept it. Doesn't even come with a thermos yet. You got to take this to the job site, just so everyone will know where you stand. They'll say, oh, are you a Harry guy? Or are you a Zane guy? Or do you like Nile? Who is it? Everyone at the job site is going to be jealous of your new uh, One Direction lunch bag. If that doesn't work, you know, speaking of the job site, you can also bring this to the job site. Your very own One Direction duct tape. I think this would be a hit at the job site. I heart Nile. I heart Zane. Someone's like, ah, oh, shit. I got a leak in my boots. Anybody got some duct tape? You're like, yo, I gotcha. I gotcha. Come here, Rick. I'll fix it up for you and just uh, tape up Rick's boots with some I heart Zane duct tape. Why not? I feel like this must have happened because there was some like executive at duct tape whose like daughter was just a super big One Direction fan and he uh, wanted to impress her. 
so he just made this one direction duct tape happen just so they could tell his daughter that he did something i don't know why are y'all trying to pair these items with the stalker gloves that's right this the the cannibal corpse stalker gloves with the one direction duct tape i think that's the move <laughs> if you want to end up on a, an fbi watch list real fast buy these together that's the move. Speaking of metal dads, there's also the Metallica Monopoly set. World Tour Edition uh, with Metallica. The player tokens include Lady Justice, Death Magnetic Coffin, Ride the Lightning Electric Chair, Master of Puppets Cross, Metal Up Your Ass, Toilet, and the Scary Guy. I feel like everyone would want to play the Metal Up Your Ass thing, right? But here's my thing with why I wouldn't buy this. Monopoly takes so fucking long to play. It takes like three fucking hours to play a game of Monopoly. Monopoly's fun, but it just takes so long to like bleed everyone dry of all their cash, right? That you're just like, ugh. Like half an hour into it, you're like, I just, okay, can we just, can we get to the end? I'm done can't do this anymore it is very dad i've never finished a game of monopoly i agree what's also very metal dad is this the aussie rules grill tool set for 70 bucks a set of tongs you get the metal spatula and you get the branding iron the meat brander 70 bucks that's a bit steep i get it but uh i want to know has anyone actually used this aussie rules meat brander on themselves there's got to be some crazy person out there who's used it. You know, there's the, the guy in the Slayer album that carved Slayer into his forearm. I feel like there's some crazy, like, metal grandpa that uh, used the Aussie Rules brand on himself, on his ass, and then uh, thought he would impress Ozzy with showing it off. And Ozzy probably just called security. Probably had Zach Wild beat the guy up because nobody wants to see your Ozzy Rules brand. Either way, I don't know about that. But I will say that there is nothing I can think of that is more dad than having your Aussie Rules grill tool set. That's right. You combine this with Till's sex toys and you got some real kinky stuff. It's true. Also got some, uh, something that I'm a little, uh, I don't know, a little bit torn on. I don't know how to feel about this. The M&M urinal mat. Here's my question. What is the use case for this? Because one of the great tragedies in America is that there are no urinals in homes. Urinals, you only see it like in the movie theater or like baseball stadium. You never see a urinal at home. So when would you even use this? Unless there's someone who also, you know, I don't know, runs a bar or a movie theater or something like that. That's such an M&M stan that he has to get the M&M mat for the urinals at his restaurant. I don't know. You bring it with you. Maybe that's what you do. You bring it with you. You keep it rolled up in your pockets. And then when you go to the bathroom at the movies, you're like, uh, oh, I got this one covered. You just roll it up, put it in the urinal, pee on it, then fish it out, rinse it off, put it back in your pocket. I don't know. I don't know. But either way, a real M&M fan needs the urinal mat. Now, last but not least, we've got maybe the most predictable merch of all time. The Deftones Weed. Deftones launched their own marijuana line, the Deftones Cannabis Collection. Here's what they had to say about it. Throughout our career, it's been an ongoing mission to provide our fans with quality products. Whether it's music, beer, or tequila, we put in the time, care, and effort to make sure we're delivering merchandise to the market that has been thoroughly scrutinized by all of us. That is the most corporate Instagram caption I have ever read. The obvious next step in the progression is cloud emoji in the foreseeable future we will be rolling out several different products in this vertical and we are excited to unveil our first the passenger box we've been waiting i mean smoking forever you know and we've been smoking get, forever oh you don't say enjoying life it's got a great scent to it you know so you smell it immediately when you when you open it up uh tastes just like it smells tastes just, just like it smells it. Yeah. you know everybody He's... looks at flower uh, through their own their own prism and uh yeah <sighs> God, this guy sounds so stoned. Let me tell you this. The last thing that Deftones fans need more of is weed. The last thing. If anything, I would say Deftones fans should probably lay off the weed or they will risk the very real possibility of ending up like poor Stefan or Stephen Carpenter from Deftones who smokes so much weed, this motherfucker thinks the earth is flat. This is what happens, my friends. Do you guys think that I'm joking when I say that weed rots your brain? I'm not joking. If you need a case study in that, look no further than this man. He thinks the earth is flat, still doesn't believe 9-11 happened. That is how much fucking weed this man has smoked. I would say the last thing you want to do is follow in his footsteps. So I would say 
before you buy the Deftones weed, buy the ghost butt plug, buy the MGK vibrator, buy the, the fucking One Direction duct tape, anything but the Deftones weed, please. Save yourself from the fate of uh, Stephen Carpenter. That is my advice. And that does it for this edition of Nutty Band Merch. Join us next time for even more, including what I can only hope will be the long-awaited Ask Alexandria butt plug.